Hello, welcome back. This is part five, video number four in The Snow Queen by Hans Christian Andersen. Gerda is still trying to find Kay. Last week she met a crow who thought that he knew where Kay was. Turned out not to be Kay. Turned out to be a very helpful prince and princess who have lent her a cart for the next stage of her journey. This is the fifth story, The Little Robber Girl. The carriage rolled on into a dark forest. Like a blazing torch, it shone in the eyes of some robbers. They could not bear it. That's gold! That's gold! they cried. They sprang forward, seized the horses, killed the little postilions, the coachman and the footman, and dragged little Gerda out of the carriage. How plump and how tender she looks, just as if she'd been fattened on nuts, cried the old robber woman, who had a long bristly beard and long eyebrows that hung low over her eyes. She looks like a fat little lamb. What a dainty dish she'll be. And as she said this, she drew out her knife, a dreadful, flashing thing. Ouch! the old woman howled. At just that moment, her own little daughter had bitten her ear. The little girl, whom she carried on her back, was a wild and reckless creature. You beasty brat! the mother exclaimed. But it kept her from using the knife on Gerda. She shall play with me, said the little robber girl. She must give me her muff and that pretty dress she wears, and sleep with me in my bed. And she again gave her mother such a bite that the woman hopped and whirled around in pain. All the robbers laughed and shouted, See how she dances with her little brat! I want to ride in the carriage, the little robber girl said. And ride she did, for she was too spoiled and headstrong for words. She and Gerda climbed into the carriage, and away they drove over stumps and stones into the depths of the forest. The little robber girl was no taller than Gerda, but she was stronger and much broader in the shoulders. Her skin was brown and her eyes coal black, almost sad in their expression. She put her arms around Gerda and said, They shan't kill you unless I get angry with you. I think you must be a princess. No, I'm not, said little Gerda. And she told about all that had happened to her, and how much she cared for Kay. The robber girl looked at her gravely, gave a little nod of approval, and told her, Even if I should get angry with you, they shan't kill you, because I'll do it myself. Then she dried Gerda's eyes, and stuck her own hands into Gerda's soft, warm muff. The carriage stopped at last, in the courtyard of a robber's castle. The walls of it were cracked from bottom to top. Crows and ravens flew out of every loophole, and bulldogs huge enough to devour a man jumped high in the air, but they did not bark, for that was forbidden. In the middle of the stone-paved, smoky old hall, a big fire was burning. The smoke of it drifted up to the ceiling, where it had to find its own way out. Soup was boiling in a big cauldron, and hares and rabbits were roasting on the spit. "'Tonight you shall sleep with me and all my little animals,' the robber girl said." After they had something to eat and drink, they went over to a corner that was strewn with rugs and straw. On sticks and perches around the bedding roosted nearly a hundred pigeons. They seemed to be asleep, but they stirred just a little when the two little girls came near them. "'They're all mine,' said the little robber girl. She seized the one that was nearest to her, held it by the legs, and shook it until it flapped its wings. "'Kiss it!' she cried, and thrust the bird in Gerda's face. Those two are the wild rascals, she said, pointing high up the wall to a hole barred with wooden sticks. Rascals of the woods they are, and they would fly away in a minute if they were not locked up. And here's my old sweetheart, Bay, she said, pulling at the horns of a reindeer that was tethered by a shiny copper ring around its neck. We have to keep a sharp eye on him, or he would run away from us too. Every single night I tickle his neck with my knife blade, for he's afraid of that. From a hole in the wall, she pulled a long knife and rubbed it against the reindeer's neck. After the poor animal had kicked up its heels, the robber girl laughed and pulled Gerda down into the bed with her. Are you going to keep that knife in bed with you? Gerda asked, and looked at it, a little frightened. I always sleep with my knife, the little robber girl said. You never can tell what may happen. But let's hear again what you told me before about little Kay and about why you are wandering through the wide world. Gerda told the story, all over again, while the wild pigeons cooed in their cage overhead, and the tame pigeons slept. The little robber girl clasped one arm around Gerda's neck, gripped her knife in the other hand, fell asleep, and snored so that one could hear her. 
but Gerda could not close her eyes at all. She did not know whether she was to live or whether she was to die. The robbers sat around their fire, singing and drinking, and the old robber woman was turning somersaults. It was a terrible sight for a little girl to see. Then the wood pigeons said, Coo, coo, we've seen little Kay. A white hen was carrying his sled, and Kay sat in the Snow Queen's sleigh. They swooped low over the trees where we lay in our nest. The Snow Queen blew upon us, and all the young pigeons died except us. Coo, coo. What is that you're saying up there? cried Gerda. Where was the Snow Queen going? Do you know anything about it? She was probably bound for Lapland, where they always have snow and ice. Why don't you ask the reindeer who's tethered beside you? Yes, there is ice and snow in that glorious land, the reindeer told her. You can prance about freely across those great glittering fields. The Snow Queen has her summer tent there, but her stronghold is a castle up near the North Pole, on the island called Spitsbergen. Oh, Kay, little Kay, Gerda sighed. Lie still, said the robber girl, or I'll stick my knife in your stomach. In the morning, Gerda told her all that the wood pigeons had said. The little robber girl looked quite thoughtful. She nodded her head and exclaimed, Leave it to me, leave it to me. Do you know where Lapland is? she asked the reindeer. Who knows it better than I? the reindeer said, and his eyes sparkled. There I was born, there I was bred, and there I kicked my heels in freedom across the fields of snow. Listen, the robber girl said to Gerda, as you see, all the men are away. Mother is still here, and here she'll stay, but before the morning is over, she will drink out of that big bottle, and then she usually dozes off for a nap. Soon as that happens, I will do you a good turn. She jumped out of bed, rushed over and threw her arms around her mother's neck, pulled at her beard bristles and said, Good morning, my dear nanny goat. Her mother thumped her nose until it was red and blue, but all that was done out of pure love. As soon as the mother had tipped up the bottle and dozed off to sleep, the little robber girl ran to the reindeer and said, I have a good notion to keep you here and tickle you with my sharp knife. You're so funny when I do, but never mind that. I'll untie your rope and help you find your way outside so that you can run back to Lapland. But you must put your best leg forward and carry this little girl to the Snow Queen's palace, where her playmate is. I suppose you heard what she told me, for she spoke so loud and you were eavesdropping. The reindeer was so happy that he bounded into the air. The robber girl hoisted little Gerda on his back, carefully tied her in place, and even gave her a little pillow to sit on. I don't do things halfway, she said. Here, take back your fur boots, for it's going to be bitter cold. I'll keep your muff, because it's such a pretty one, but your fingers mustn't get cold. Here are my mother's big mittens, which will come right up to your elbows. Pull them on. Now your hands look just like my ugly mother's big paws and Gerda shared happy tears. I don't care to see you blubbering, said the little robber girl. You ought to look pleased now. Here, take these two loaves of bread and this ham along, so that you won't starve. When these provisions were tied on the back of the reindeer, the little robber girl opened the door and called in all the big dogs. Then she cut the tether with her knife and said to the reindeer, Now run, but see that you take good care of this little girl. Gerda waved her big mittens to the little robber girl and said goodbye. Then the reindeer bounded away, over stumps and stones, straight through the great forest, over swamps and across plains, as fast as she could run. The wolves howled, the ravens shrieked, and kashoo, kashoo, the red streaks of light ripped through the heavens with a noise that sounded like sneezing. Those are my old northern lights, said the reindeer. See how they flash. And on he ran, faster than ever by night and day. The loaves were eaten, and the whole ham was eaten. And there they were, in Lapland. This is the sixth story, The Lap Woman and the Finn Woman. They stopped in front of the little hut, and a makeshift dwelling it was. The roof of it almost touched the ground, and the doorway was so low that the family had to lie on their stomachs to crawl in it or out of it. They stopped in front of the little hut, and a makeshift dwelling it was. The roof of it almost touched the ground, and the doorway was so low that the family had to lie on their stomachs to crawl in it or out of it. No one was at home except an old lap woman, who was cooking fish over a whale oil lamp. The reindeer told her Gerda's whole story, but first he told his own, which he thought was much more important. Besides, Gerda was so cold that she couldn't say a thing. 
Oh, you poor creatures, the lap woman said. You've still got such a long way to go. Why, you will have to travel hundreds of miles into the Finnmark, for it's there that the Snow Queen is taking a country vacation and burning her blue fireworks every evening. I'll jot down a message on a dried codfish, for I haven't any paper. I want you to take it to the Finn woman who lives up there. She will be able to tell you more about it than I can. As soon as Gerda had thawed out and had had something to eat and drink, the lap woman wrote a few words on a dried codfish, told Gerda to take good care of it, and tied her again on the back of the reindeer. Off he ran, all night long. The skies crackled and swished as the most beautiful northern lights flashed over their heads. At last they came to the Finnmark and knocked at the Finn woman's chimney, for she hadn't a sign of a door. It was so hot inside that the Finn woman went about almost naked. She was small and terribly dowdy, but she had at once helped little Gerda off with her mittens and boots and loosened her clothes. Otherwise the heat would have wilted her. Otherwise the heat would have wilted her. Then the woman put a piece of ice on the reindeer's head and read what was written on the codfish. She read it three times, and when she knew it by heart, she put the fish into the kettle of soup, for they might as well eat it. She never wasted anything. The reindeer told her his own story first, and then little Gerda's. The thin woman winked a knowing eye, but she didn't say anything. You're such a wise woman, said the reindeer. I know that you can tie all the winds of the world together with a bit of cotton thread. If the sailor unties one knot, he gets a favourable wind. If he unties another, he gets a stiff gale, while if he unties the third and fourth knots, such a tempest rages that it flattens the trees in the forest. Won't you give this little girl something to drink that will make her as strong as twelve men, so that she may overpower the Snow Queen? Twelve strong men? the thin woman sniffed. Much good that would be. She went to the shelf, took down a big rolled-up skin, and unrolled it. On this skin... On this skin, strange characters were written, and the Finn woman read them until the sweat rolled down her forehead. The reindeer again begged her to help Gerda, and little Gerda looked at her with such tearful, imploring eyes that the woman began winking again. She took the reindeer aside in a corner, and while she was putting another piece of ice on his head, she whispered to him, Little Kay is indeed with the Snow Queen, and everything there just suits him fine. He thinks it's the best place in the world. But that's because he has a splinter of glass in his heart, and a small piece of it in his eye. Unless these can be gotten out, he will never be human again, and the Snow Queen will hold him in her power. But can't you fix little Gerda something to drink that will give her more power than all those things? No power I could give could be as great as that which she already has. Don't you see how men and beasts are compelled to serve her, and how far she has come in the wide world since she started out in her naked feet? We mustn't tell her about this power. Strength lies in her heart, because she's such a sweet, innocent child. If she herself cannot reach the Snow Queen and rid little Kay of those pieces of glass, then there is no help that we can give her. The Snow Queen's garden lies about eight miles from here. You may carry the little girl there and put her down by the big bush covered with red berries that grows on the snow. Then don't you stand there gossiping, but hurry to get back here. The Finn woman lifted little Gerda onto the reindeer, and he galloped away as fast as he could. Oh, cried Gerda, I forgot my boots and I forgot my mittens. She soon felt the need of them in that knife-like cold, but the reindeer did not dare stop. He galloped on until they came to the big bush that was covered with red berries. Here he set Gerda down and kissed her on the mouth, while big shining tears ran down his face. Then he ran back as fast as he could. Little Gerda stood there, without boots and without mittens, right in the middle of icy Finnmark. She ran as fast as ever she could. A whole regiment of snowflakes swirled towards her, but they did not fall from the sky, for there was not a cloud up there, and the northern lights were ablaze. The flakes skirmished along the ground, and the nearer they came, the larger they grew. Gerda remembered how large and strange they'd appeared when she looked at them under the magnifying glass, but here they were much more monstrous and terrifying. They were alive. They were the Snow Queen's advance guard, and their shapes were most strange. Some looked like ugly overgrown porcupines. Some were like a knot of snakes that stuck their heads in every direction, and others were like fat little bears with every hair a bristle. All of them were glistening white, for all were living snowflakes. 
It was so cold that as little Gerda said the Lord's Prayer, she could see her breath freezing in front of her mouth, like a cloud of smoke. It grew thicker and thicker, and took the shape of little angels that grew bigger and bigger the moment they touched the ground. All of them had helmets on their heads, and they carried shields and lances in their hands. Rank upon rank they increased, and when Gerda had finished her prayer, she was surrounded by a legion of angels. They struck the dread snowflakes with their lances, and shivered them into a thousand pieces. Little Gerda walked on, unmolested and cheerful. The angels rubbed her hands and feet to make them warmer, and she trotted briskly along to the Snow Queen's palace. But now, let us see how little Kay was getting on. Little Gerda was furthest from his mind, and he hadn't the slightest idea that she was just outside the palace. There ends the sixth story. The seventh and final story, saving for next week. So, if you want to make sure that you don't miss that, hit that subscribe button um, and the bell, and then you'll be notified. If you'd like to follow me on the Intimate Quebs, you can find me on Patreon. Uh, there'll be a link for that in the description. And also, I'm on Goodreads if you'd like to follow what I'm reading. And also, if you would like to recommend or suggest something or make a request for a story that I read, leave that down in the comments. I've got a couple which are coming up soon, or maybe they're out. I'm not sure which order things are going to go up in. That's enough rambling from me. I'll see you next week for the seventh and final part of The Snow Queen. Goodbye.